Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Best Journey Podcast. I am your host, Maddie, and this podcast is where I get to share the word of the Lord with you in an honest and encouraging way. And in that, I prayerfully hope and desire for God to reveal himself to you in your own journey. The heart of this podcast is found in scripture and in what God has shown me. See, the Christian walk, life itself is a journey, but what's more is your journey in and with the Lord. That is the best journey of all. So welcome to the Best Journey Podcast. It is episode 18, and today I'm asking perhaps a strange question, and that is, are you alive? Some of you may quickly know the answer and say, yes, hallelujah, praise God, I feel it through and through. Some of you may be like, "Mm, I don't know, probably not. I feel stuck. I've had a hard go of it. No, I mean, I'm mentally, spiritually, and physically like feeling dead. And trust me, I've been there. I know that feeling and I feel you. A lot of you may be feeling in between. Perhaps you really feel nothing. But whether you're feeling alive and good and all the things or not, this podcast episode is still for you. Because we can all learn from the Bible. And I really want to talk about what it means to be alive in Christ and what that looks like to be spiritually filled and full in Christ. Because when you're alive spiritually, so you will be mentally and physically too. Because I believe all three are connected. Now, before some of you think otherwise and jump off the rails here, yes, It can be broken. That cycle can be broken and you will struggle with all three. But the point I'm trying to make here is the freedom, the actual life found in Jesus. It's through him that we're really truly alive. So to start this episode, I want to start with a verse, the verse that sparked this whole topic. It was a note that I found from years ago in my Bible, from a Bible study class that my mom actually spoke on. And the verse is Ephesians 2, 5. It says, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Not until have I done a great digging and thought and Bible study on God and his love have I really realized how wonderful and great a God he is. It is literally because of his love, not only that we're here, but because he gave up Jesus and because of his grace and mercy he had, that we even have a chance. He is a relational, loving God. So looking back at that verse, it's because God made us alive with Christ. See, he made us alive even when we are really dead in our sin. It's literally because of God's grace were saved. But here's the thing. And thank God for A.W. Tozer. He spoke so much wisdom through this man. He said, before there can be fullness, there must be emptiness. Before God can fill us with himself, we must first be emptied of ourselves. And it's true. God did do all these things and Jesus did die. But here's the thing. We have a choice. Oil and water do not mix. Fresh water and salt water aren't the same. Nor does sin and our faith share the same space. We have to want to be alive. We have to want God to make a change in us. We have to want To die to ourselves in our flesh. Okay. Take me for example. Personally, I want to lose weight. Okay? I do. I really do. But here's my battle. Do I want it enough to not eat cookies and chips? Do I want it enough to dedicate time to go exercise when I know I should? 
Do I want to lose weight enough to give up all the junk and processed food that doesn't help my body? Meaning, do I love God enough to pray more than once a day? Do I love God enough to not watch TV but use that time to read the Bible instead? Do I love God enough to be kind in my attitude towards others despite how I feel? Do I love God enough to include him in my decisions and ask what he wants for me instead of what I think I deserve for myself? When I feel at my lowest, do I pray or do I turn on the TV and just check out mentally? When I don't know what to do or where to turn, do I open the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit for help? Or do I ignore the situation and just take pleasure in my earthly devices instead? And yes, I'm guilty in speaking from experience. See, we're all in a daily battle for our hearts and our minds' attention. This world is death. Our flesh is death. Do I want to be alive in Christ? Do I want to change? Do I want to give up my sinful pleasures? Do I want to tell myself, my flesh, no? Here's the cool part though, friends. Jesus talked about this in John chapter 6. He said, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. See, we can do nothing on our own. We literally only can ever get so far. We have to decide what we give in and ourselves over to. People who are crucified with Christ have three distinct marks. Number one, they are facing only one direction. Number two, they can never turn back. And number three, they no longer have plans of their own. See, A.W. Tozer said it best there because it's a heartfelt decision. You get, up, you get fed up enough, seen enough, you know enough, you're frustrated and tired of trying. It's not working on your own. The question is there. At what point do you surrender? Throw your hands up and get so beyond tired of fighting and being hurt, angry, and exhausted you're ready to not look back and actually step up and choose that narrow path looking forward. Ephesians 2, 1 to 5. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. When he raised Christ from the dead, it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. I'll use myself as another example, okay? My faith journey has really had an uphill climb the past few years. For two seasons, it felt as if I was barely on the path at all. In fact, if you asked Jesus, he'd probably tell you I went off and found a couple thorn bushes and chose to get beat up, scraped up, and slowly found my way back bleeding and full of cuts and bruises. <laughs> it was really hard. God felt so distant. Each day felt heavy, like this cloud was over my head all the time. The days were literally long and hard. I had no desire to do anything. Oh, but yeah, everything was great. 
I'm blessed. I have a roof over my head, more clothes than I need, money in the bank, a loving husband and family, a job. So what's wrong, Maddie? Why did I feel so dead inside? Where was God? Let me tell you this. God never left. I did. It was a wilderness season for me that I walked through. It was a time where God showed me how desperately I needed him. And there's literally nothing I can do on my own strength. I need Jesus every single second of the day, friend. I was so lost and depressed. I didn't see the point in living. I knew all the things, but I couldn't figure it out why I felt this way. It didn't matter. I had to get so low to see how high God is. I had to be stripped of my pride to see that God is God and I am not. I had to be so in the dark to see how bright God is. I had to be so alone to see what a real friend Jesus is. I had to be so lost I could be found. I had to be dead so I knew what it meant to be alive. Job 33, 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. When I understand that everything happening to me is to make me more Christ-like, it resolves a great deal of anxiety. Faith is not a conclusion you reach. It's a journey you live. That's A.W. Tozer. The verse and that quote is what we sometimes have to go through to gain the perspective and understanding of God, of faith. Only God only by Jesus can we be truly alive. No other thing or being can. To wrap this up, I wanted to share that when you feel broken, crushed, you have no desire or feeling. It's just like you're living in despair. Not only can Jesus save you, but give you a heartbeat that carries on. It doesn't matter what comes your way. It doesn't matter how you feel. He gives a peace and a joy that just can't be explained. You start to see that your flesh doesn't count for anything, but you're alive by his spirit. It's him that gives you life and life everlasting and it's then that you know why we live why you're alive because Jesus died for us so we live we're alive for him friends I want to thank you so much for joining me please check this out on Spotify YouTube Apple and Google podcasts comment share rate and be blessed as you go about your day, remembering God has a journey for us of hope and purpose. So let's give our best journey back to God with sacrifice and praise. Till next time.